the views and opinions expressed by the host do not reflect yours. You're now under the influence of good conversation. This is Vibes, the podcast, hosted by Mimi. From all nation. Hey y'all, it's me. I'm back. It's Mimi, aka Joy Trash, aka I feel like I had another persona. Maybe that was it. It's just Mimi and Joy Trash. Okay, it's two different people today, <laughs> y'all. All right, y'all. Welcome to a brand new show. A show is brand new. New is the show is a brand new. Um, it's just Eric and I again. You know, we we almost had a guest, y'all, and then it was a rough night before. So this one I understand. It's rough out here in these streets, you know, when you be drinking and then you, you're old, and then you realize it's gonna take me like two days to recover instead of one. So shout out to all the old people who can't drink like they used to drink because your body shutting down on you. Um, Eric, what are we drinking today? We're drinking Sauvignon Blanc, California. Uh, Colos du Bois. That's how you say that because, you know, because I'm from where they made it. Over there in Europe. Colos du Bois. And that's not... Yeah, I don't feel like spelling nothing for y'all today. Sound it out. Jeez. Y'all dumb. Damn. Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> I can't. I don't feel like spelling shit. All right, guys. Um, that's what we drinking on because um, we're fancy as fuck. We drink on Sauvignon Blanc. Colo du Bois. Um, Eric, you ready for this lyric of the week? It's you, it's your old. Of course not. Of course not. This one is a throw bike. All right. Let's see if y'all can get this. She said, I wouldn't be over here if my man had been treating me right. I came here to try to catch him because he'd been sneaking around every night. Eric. <laughs> it sounds like an old blues song. <laughs> it is an old blues song. <laughs> That's one of my favorite old blues songs. Wow. I'm not going uh, to I'm not going to guess. I'm not going to know the name of the song. Uh, so this is a blues lady singing this record. It's not a lady. I do, you said she, in the beginning she said That's name that's part of the lyric. It's part of the lyric. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this is good, y'all. Y'all should get some of this Clos du Bois Sauvignon Blanc. California. It's really good. Eric, do you need some help? You need a lifeline? Yeah. I don't have any to give you. Of course not. I just I just thought it would be nice if I asked if you needed a lifeline. Wow. You're a good friend. I try to be. Yep. He's an old man. That really helps. <laughs> He's an old black man. That really helps. Oh. So I was not BB King. No. Buddy guy. No. You know. So I'll tell you what the song is about, right? I heard you see the song is about infidelity. I mean, that's all blue songs exactly. are about so, infidelity. Exactly. What? So the lady tried to catch her husband cheating at the casino because. He had been going out every night because she thought he was spending that money on a lady. Was he spending the money on a lady, though? No. He was spending the money at the casino. Because he's a gambler. Yes. Which is worse, being a cheater or a gambler. I'm not, I'm still, I don't know who this is, but. 
Oh, God. I mean, he was down to his last money. About this last three quarters or something? Oh, Eric, you were so close. I know the so- yeah. I know what you're talking about, but I'm not still never going to get the name of the artist. All right. I'm just... We're going to stop right there. <laughs> Y'all, this is Johnny Taylor. I was, really, I was literally going to say Johnny Taylor because that's one of my mom's favorite artists, seriously. So I was that, really going to say that. Eric, just always go with your gut, man. Always go with your gut. I I haven't listened to that song. I listened to it, but I haven't looked to see who did it in a while. But I was going to go with Johnny Taylor. Yeah, because he was down to his last $2. If you would have did it's Cheaper to Keeper or uh, cheaper to keep the, uh, his other known song. Oh, I forgot about that. I'm listening to nothing but Johnny Taylor on the way back home. <laughs> Cheap <Cheaper> to keep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eric. When I be on this blues bench for the rest of the week, I'm blaming you. Wow. I'm, it's going to be early in the morning on my way to Burke. Wow. It's Cheap to keep. I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. All right, y'all. Everybody that's down on their last $2. You need to manage your money better. The fuck? <laughs> Ain't got nothing to do with us. All right, y'all. Let's get into the snippet of the week. Um, I hope I'm saying her last name right. But this is Coco Sarai or Sarah with Coffee in the Morning. I like this song. You know, it's a little different. Yeah, check this out. Listen to the song. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about all the black shit that I could pull together. Because I don't give a fuck about these hoes. All right, y'all. We're going to talk about some black shit after we come back. <laughs> we are the most beautiful creatures in the whole world. Black people. I mean, and I mean that in every every sense. Uh, outside and inside. And to me, we have a culture that uh, is surpassed by, 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 by no other civilization. We don't know anything about it. <laughs> Coffee in the morning, in the evening time. Take me there, ooh, I wanna go with you All oh, that deep black heaven Take me there, ooh, I wanna go with you All oh, that sweet dark heaven Take me there, I swear that I love it, I do This is what compels me to compel them And I will do it by whatever means necessary All right, you dirty, filthy, musty whores. We're back. That's uh, co- Coco. I was about to call her Coffee Sarai. Coco Sarai with Coffee in the Morning. That song is actually everywhere, but she has um, an EP out that's on SoundCloud. It's new. So y'all would ch- check that out. Um, I got to stop drinking. God <clears throat> damn. Go check out her work. Coco. Sarai, S A R A I. First name C O C O A. Um, she had good music. So shout out to Coco. All right, let's move on. Let's get into some black shit. What's all this black shit? I don't know. Because this week it was barely some black shit to talk about. Because uh, apparently people want to do the right thing and shit. The fuck? Um, so first up, y'all favorite uncle, you know, Uncle uh, Terrence Mine Howard. Um, was ordered to pay his ex-wife $1.3 million in spousal support. Because if y'all remember, he had been trying to get out of paying her money for like the last two years or something. And um, initially, I think she only requested or the judge ordered him to pay 475000 And now this fool is up to $1.3 million in spousal support. This Which wife is this? I don't know. Terrence Howard, I just, I mean, the last one. <laughs> That's all I know. I, but I feel like he, he's married and remarried almost every wife, I feel like. So I'm lost with who he, wife is this. Which wife is this, I should say. I mean, he's, I really don't know because all of them are Asian. So that's a pattern. Yeah. 
and I don't know the second wife because I think this is third marriage he's on currently. Because mm. okay, so it's current marriage. If I'm correct, he was married. And then he got divorced from his his wife that he's currently married to, but then they got remarried. Mm. And now the uh, Solomon is with his the second wife. Second then. wife. Okay. Who? <sighs> that's a year. That's like almost a. Nah, that's like a year worth for Empire money, but it's probably not. No, nah, that's literally like one episode. No, you know what? Maybe two episodes. I, was, I, don't, mm. I don't think he's getting a million an episode. That ain't no. going that good. He makes like 275K an episode. That's, that's like a couple episodes. Yeah, about three or four for him. So he just got to get his salary up. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to figure out. I don't remember why they got divorced because I I can't keep up. Probably because he hit her at some point or was abusive at some point. I mean that. I'm pretty sure he was cheating. That too. I can't keep up with Terrence Howard and all these little Asian women. I can't. Okay, because he liked the same the one the women that look the same. Like. I mean, at this point, they should all be tested to see if they sisters or some shit. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, okay, Terrence Howard, whatever, sir. So I know I'm, I'm glad to see this is the final season of Empire. I think the world is, you know, I'd be happy if it just didn't come back on. I'd be honestly happy. They, they got to hit 100 episodes so he can get syndicated money. I mean, or they could not because they don't need no more money. <clears throat> they got other projects that they can Lee do. Lee Daniels want to get syndicated money. Lee Daniels is still out here trying to bring Star back, and I <laughs> want him to stop it. If BET not gonna bring it back, ain't nobody bringing it back. Like B- BET of all places, Lee, just let it be, okay? Let it be and let it go. He's trying to get that Tyler Perry deal. He gonna have to. Mm, he got an Academy I mean, Award though, so he got some. He got some some things on his resume as well. Tyler Perry just got the black people. Lee Daniels Wait, got awards. What Lee Daniels getting an Academy Award for? Didn't Precious win Academy Awards? I mean, no, Monique won. So that, you can oh, say that's right, because he did direct yeah. that. Yeah, so he got down his resume. Yeah, that's true. Because I was thinking Shadow Boxer. She was in Shadow Box. Have you ever seen that movie? I didn't. I know she was in there. I know that's that's what they actually, started. It was actually it was a very odd movie, but it was actually really good. That's how I feel about Precious. Well, Precious wasn't odd. It was a real life story. <laughs> it was a real life story that's odd. I wouldn't call it odd. It's just abusive. You know, niggas out here abusing kids. Mm, it's more than that. It's, diff- but, it's different. Yeah. It's it's wrong, first off, but it's different. Yep. We're going to go with that. Um, but Shadow Boxer was just like all around weird because I don't know what the fucking storyline was about. That's a Lee Daniels storyline right there for you. Right. You don't really know what it was about. I just know it was um, Monique was in there, Helen Mirren, who was like an assassin or some shit. Cuba Gooden Jr. was in there. And uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Really? Yeah. Before he got famous. Yeah. And him and Monique was in the movie, you know, smashing each other, which is (laughs) really... That's the odd couple right there. I was like, what in the... The fuck, Lee? What is this? What is this movie? But I watched it in its entirety. Can't tell you what the fuck it's about, but it's okay. Mm. Um, enough of those people. Uh, your uncle Dame Dash, he was on somebody's radio station podcast. Yep, see, he was on somebody's podcast calling out Jay Z, calling him a fraud um, because of his recent NFL deal. What? Okay, so what I don't know is why. And Eric, maybe you can explain to me. I mean, I remember some stuff, but why does Dame Dash still have this imaginary beef with Jay-Z? Biker fella. How the whole thing went down. He felt like Jay-Z betrayed him and basically signed, uh, aligned himself with Lior and the people at Def Jam over him and Rockefeller because he felt like Lior was trying to separate them for the longest and he uh, and Jay allowed that to happen. So he left. He, thought, he always felt like Jay's always trying to be in the best interest of Jay. So he just always felt like Jay's always following the money. Jay feel like he can get the most money, yeah, he's gonna do that. So with 
uh, with Rockefeller, with Rockaware, with everything he sold or been a part of selling is always about how much more money I can get out of it. So that's where Dame is coming from from that. So he's just burnt about how that whole thing with Rockefeller ended. But how long ago was that? 15 years ago. I mean, you can't get over that because his career hasn't been the same since. And he probably has the way feel like, I don't know if it's right or wrong, because I don't know the, the whole, like, lingo around it. He feel like his name has been defamed to some extent because he felt like he was fighting for Jay and all that stuff. But it seemed like people in the, on the outside feel like he was just being an asshole just because to be an asshole. But Danes feel like he was fighting for the principle of the culture and Jay-Z and just being empowering and just black, having this black company and to keep rising up and don't let the white man come in and separate us. Which is kind of what happened in the NFL with that whole thing, and I don't know. It, that's but that's where his whole beef with Jay comes from, in my opinion. So he's never gonna let that go. And plus, see where Jay's at, and see where Dame's at. You kind of gonna have some animosity because like this nigga still trying to make some shit. He can't give me. He can't not necessarily. He can't help me, but this nigga been doing this shit for decades. So why the fuck y'all surprised? That's basically what he's trying to say. I mean, okay, so I got that. Basically, I mean, was calling him fraud, and yeah. I mean the thing, the same thing you just said. He was like, he's just in it for the money, but I mean, Damien Dash, just let it go, please. Just but if he gets asked a question about Jay Z, he it's not like he's going to these interviews openly saying this. But if he get asked that question, he's just going to speak his opinion, and his opinion may seem a little more spiteful because he's had that relationship with Jay Z. It's like talk to an ex about somebody, and then they're going to have, and they, if they still have some bad feelings towards, and they're not going to probably not speak on them in the most positive light. You know, it's been decades after that relationship ended. Right, but I mean, so something terrible happened to you, and how do you expect <laughs> to grow to the next phase of your career if you won't let that shit go? But you, you get keep getting asked about it. You just easily just say, man, I'm not, that's, that's his business. I'm not talking about that. But I haven't had no relationship. I haven't had a relationship with Jay-Z in, since 2000, since 2004. I'm, I, whatever he's doing, he's doing. Y'all y'all can talk about that. I'm not here to talk about that. That's all you right. need to say. He, he, that's exactly. I agree with you, but he's not saying that. He goes into deep detail i will be like, this nigga ain't shit. Fuck him. You know? And and all kind of extra stuff. So it's like, Damien Dash. Um, I mean, we already know your career has not been the same since that whole ordeal. But, I mean, at the same time, you tried to make a movie with your cousin Stacey Dash in it. And she was, she was still kind of, kind of, no, This is somewhat. when, no. Wait, what year are you talking this is li- like last year. Oh, yeah, you're right. That, and, oh, you're about, that's what you're talking about like in the 2000s when she was still kind of maybe No, he made a, a a hood-ass movie with his, his Republican cousin. That um, movie that had Kanye West as a executive producer or mm-hmm. some shit. And nobody mm-hmm. watched it. Of course not, not. Not a single soul. Of course not. And that's when we knew that you were really struggling. <laughs> Um, That's that, that was the moment everyone That knew. was the moment where we knew Because before that you were in hiding Some damn weird man of your own business And then He's been on reality shows uh, He's on the he's on the new BT uh, Star Search I don't know what it's called No but that, one that watches whole, that I know but he's on now I see that promo and he's on now I'm surprised he would do that But I guess he needs some he money He needs some money Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it, it just Yeah I He's he's oh, not God. he's not gonna be at the same level he was with Rockefeller was in his peak. He doesn't feel like he gets the credit he deserves for that. He feel like Jay gets too much credit for it, and Jay kind of backstabbed him and Biggs. You know now Biggs and Jay are kind of cordial cool because Biggs is now working with one of Jay's guys with the fashion stuff, and they ain't probably feel some type of way about that too. Like he hasn't worked. They haven't reached out to an agreement where they can do a deal together or something like that. I don't know. I'm just speaking those things. I'm assuming that may be true or not. But I know it seemed like Dame is definitely still a builder about how everything went down 15 years ago. Yeah. I mean... I mean, that, it's no get, different than how Suge Knight felt about Dr. Dre when Dre kept rising to up to certain levels of success and Suge was down here at the Lord. I end. mean, he shouldn't have been out there killing people, so... According to Suge, he was set up. Um, of course he was. Of course you were set up to go kill people. <sighs> While Dr. Dre was beating up Michelle. So, I mean, at least he didn't kill nobody, right? The fuck? <sighs> people, people evolve and grow. They do. And they he, apologize when they need to get more money. And he evolved and he grew and he grew into beats. <laughs> Literally beats the headphones, yeah, not beating beat. on women. 
I just want to say how raggedy the internet is because when that Misha Lay movie came out on Lifetime and they made those memes, it was like beats for Misha Lay or, or whatever it said. When I tell you that shit had me on the floor, y'all, I was like, I know this is not right to be laughing at this. Um, this is the internet. I think it was like Beats by Misha Lay. Oh, that was God. that's trash. Yeah, that's really trash. The internet's trash. We are better than this. Um, I don't know if I am because <laughs> I'm going to laugh at it. Oh, uh, this is the era that allegedly helps Popeyes sell spicy chicken sandwiches. Oh, we're gonna talk about that in a hot second because this shit is ridiculous. Um, all right, so Damien, let hope, it go. I hope you get some money soon. Let it go. Yeah. I mean, basically, because at this point, Jay-Z don't give a shit about you. Obviously. So he's, you know, making deal with white people. He's so been making deal with white people. He, he's making a deal with, you know, the most reddest, neckest of the white people. Talk about the NFL? Yeah. I mean, you actually are correct in the reddest, oldest, most wealthiest white people. Yeah. That's that's what he's doing right now. So he's he's trying to be a wealthy white man. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he's almost there. He's at he, he's, he's mean, at a billion already. He's trying to yeah. get more of them. He, I don't know how much more he needs, but I it's mean, never a, enough, a, apparently, it's never enough. He doesn't need it. The fuck, he like, is never enough. Y'all live in the damn sky, okay? You Beyonce Blue and the Blue twins has never Blue seen a ceiling in, in her, her whole, whole life. life. That means y'all live in the fucking sky. Like how? <laughs> Much more money do you need? Everything is vodka. Sean Carter. Everything is vodka. I mean, wealthy <laughs> white men drink vodka. So there you go. Everything <laughs> is shaka. I mean, I'm still trying to get that part, you know. I don't know what blue meant. Yeah. I think it's interesting. Everybody's been, it's been like two weeks since the whole, Jay, almost two weeks since this whole Jay-Z thing came out. And everybody's like still talking about it, picking sides. It's like, why the hell do y'all really care? Right, you do you know you're not getting under his money? Right, and y'all not part of the deal. Cotton Kaepernick did get a settlement from the he, NFL. He surely did. Are y'all still protesting? Not watching? No, because y'all were never well, protesting. I was saying when was y'all when were still the pro- watching. When did the protest start? What was the protest about? Like, but y'all got an opinion though. Exactly. Like, if, if the shoe was on the other foot, would y'all not do the same thing? Like, shut the fuck up! Because yeah. now y'all like getting on my nerves. Right. People on the internet. <clears throat> okay. Um, moving on. So, y'all know it's been a whole year since Auntie Ree passed away, right? Mm-hmm. Who? God rest her soul in her red pump. You better die beat for the gods, Ree. Um, but apparently, Auntie Ree died leaving behind $1 million in uncashed checks. How? Because you know she didn't want to get her money to that IRS. You know she owes them. How did she, who, how, who finds this stuff? Who? Um, you know, digging through her things and she they found it. She has these in, 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 in furniture. Like she left three wheels in her furniture, allegedly. Yeah. And then she left a million dollars in uncashed <laughs> checks. But y'all know Auntie Reed, she carried around her purse everywhere she went because she liked cash better. But don't you, isn't there, isn't there like 180 days, like? Void notice on checks if you don't count. I mean, cash. when you re, you could do what you want to do. I guess so. Okay, because she had a billion dollars worth of checks just sitting around in the goddamn house. <laughs> like, I ain't gonna cash these because the IRS gonna it's take probably, care yeah, of it. Yeah, she forgot about them. I mean, probably when you so goddamn rich <laughs> and you just like rich and tired. What's yeah? You know, she was like, I can't go to the bank today, y'all. Just because put, put it in my damn drawer. I, I go do with, something. Do something with it. Where's my children? Put this up. I'll <laughs> I'll get to it when I can. You know, I'm still trying to count out this other two million dollars I just got yesterday for singing at the White House. You know, that's what you could do when you rich as fuck. Yeah. And you you forget that you put checks up. I think that's what happened. I think she got a million dollars in checks. And she put them up, and she forgot where she put them. She forgot that she had them there. And that's when you know you just got so much goddamn money, mm. you don't even know what to do with it. She was seeing silence, apparently. Um, okay. I mean, Ree had a ceiling. I know she did. She, she had a ceiling. You know why? Because she was raised in the South. 
shit. <laughs> I ain't got shit to do with shit. I got shit to do with shit. You know, I mean, okay. Just you just pass so on. What are they gonna Lord. do with this founded million dollars in checks? They're trying to divide it up amongst her estate, which is her children. And you know how black people get. Yeah, aren't they still? Aren't they still fighting about that estate? Yeah, which ugh, black people, when it comes to this stuff right here, y'all get on my nerves. Does every black celebrity that dies stop Michael Jackson? <clears throat> no, they were yeah, weren't. Uh, that was some issues with the kids and and the and the grandma and you know, the, at, in the beginning, but the estate kind of took care of the financial stuff. The estate, and then one of his brothers was still trying to come back. And I get think his some brothers money. are cousins or something. Yeah, and then I mean the he cut nephew. them. He cut yeah, he cut the brothers and the dad off like dead squat when he's alive. <sighs> but I scratched it. Every black celebrity that dies, even Michael Jackson, have issues with the, with the family once they die because everybody feels like they're entitled to some money. Which I just don't be understanding because it's like Negro. When did you work one day of? When I worked the fuck? When did you do what I had to do? When did you go to work for me? Uh, that's uh, okay, but yep, her her estate. Huh, I hate when they call it estate. estate. Quotation marks. Her children are fighting over her money. That's basically, crazy. that's crazy. And I was already so pissed off. Like maybe two months, I think, or it was a, it was a short time period after she died. They sold her house just to get money. Yeah, the house she lived and in. Then, yeah. Oh, and they, I they, think they yeah. only made maybe that. Well, they only got probably one or two million from the house. I'm like, so quick to sell it, my nigga. This is Aretha Franklin's house. Do you know how much someone would have paid for this? Or why are y'all selling it in the first place? Why not keep it in the family? Too too much thinking about cash and money assets. <sighs> I can't. Let's cash all this stuff in. Some cash that y'all gonna spend in instantly, re- right? And then y'all gonna be trying to figure out what else y'all can pawn in, right? To get some more money. God damn! Tell you about niggas. Man, can't live with them. Can't <laughs> live without them. Speaking of not living without niggas, the niggas of the internet have been getting on my nerves with this goddamn pop ass versus Twitter. chick. Filet thing. This is the most ghetto ratchet shit I have ever witnessed in my life. That y'all are on the internet People raving fine with this about and this shit comparing now. chicken sandwiches. Okay, chicken. Black Twitter. Do y'all know how this looks? Ghetto as fuck. It looks like. I mean, all y'all gotta do at this point is throw in some goddamn watermelon. Okay, because this this is so ignorant. It's so dumb. For y'all to just be on the internet, like, doing all these videos now with the, with the Popeyes and the Chick-fil-A. And now it's so ridiculous. We're not going to even get into it, but the fact that Popeyes sold, like, $25 million in social media ads. That's what they were saying. Uh, a lot of uh, marketers were saying that number is inaccurate. But the fact that they got the, the amount of free publicity that they got. From Black that, Twitter. Yeah. But and and that's why I was like, we're not gonna get into like supporting businesses that y'all should be supporting. But the really ridiculous thing is how people are going out in groves to to the Popeyes like y'all ain't never been to Popeyes before. I was wondering like, did they like did did the chicken sandwiches become national or something? Now all of a sudden they selling out in lines, flocking like these are Jordans. I, I truly don't understand. Like I know we talked about it a few episodes back. I actually reposted it before I deleted it because it was getting ridiculous. But uh, I mean, it's a good sandwich, but I honestly not it ain't for the, the go, greatest sandwich no, in the I'm goddamn not for the world. Go fucking buy it and just post about it, like I, I it's so stupid to do that but then that also shows you how gullible people are and how easily manipulated people are somebody the the internet is posting this is the best sandwich in the world and then what happens people flock to Popeyes and y'all are literally waiting in lines for one to three hours because them lines as long as hell for a chicken sandwich and then people are posting photos of the employees sitting back tired like this, this it's not even, even ignorant. F- right, it's not even funny. It's, it's so stupid. ignorant. I don't. I can't understand it. I can't understand why y'all think this is a good idea. 
Like, go home and cook your own goddamn chicken right. sandwich. I thought this was going to last like a day, so I thought it would be like a funny one-day thing. Right, but and this is now it's it's a week still later. Going it's doing, on. Like, this is sad. I can't I can't get it. It's literally a goddamn chicken sandwich with some Thousand Island dressing exactly. and, and two pieces of bread. That's literally what it is. And if y'all can't go home and cook that shit yourself... Smack yourself. Because uh, I'm really trying to understand... And I just think that I can't. <laughs> I think that's what it is. Like, niggas is leaving work to wait in the Popeye's line for two hours for a fucking chicken sandwich. Yeah. Stupid shit. Side note, shout out to uh, Pitchfork Chicago. They have a great chicken sandwich with barbecue <laughs> sauce. <laughs> I'm not saying they're the best, but the chicken sandwich is really good. Mm. Another side note, shout out to... Is the restaurant we went to Flash? Is that what it was called? Flash. Well, uh, I, I forget. The, I forget. The greatest I forget. tacos of my whole life. I forget. I think it's called Flash. It's on the north side or Wicker Park area. Is that Wicker Park? North side. Okay. It's on the north side somewhere here in Chicago. North side, not too far from Wrigley Field. Oh, well, that's definitely not Wicker Park. Okay. So it's near Wrigley Field, baseball stadium in Chicago. I think it is called a Flash. I think because that's what I saw the thing. I had some lobster tacos. When I tell y'all this shit was bomb, I don't, like, I still think about them to this day. Okay? <laughs> to this day. That's how I felt about that chicken sandwich. I had another one today, so I just had to get to do it again. Man. And um, so we got the Flash or Flash Tacos. They up there with Antique Tacos. Now, you know I love Antique Tacos, and they have two locations in Chicago. No, that's in Wicker Park. So, yeah, Antique, one is in Wicker Park or Logan Square, Square. and then the other one is on 35th uh, and Racing. It's right there. And, y'all, just go get the damn taco. It's so good. Well, I think that's going to be the next on Black Triller's agenda. Tacos, who got the best tacos? You know what? As long as they don't say Taco Bell. Shout out to my best friend, Dominique, because, you know, she made some bomb-ass tacos last night, okay? I had about four of them bad boys. She made some jerk ones and then some regular spicy ones, and all that shit was good. So, you know, shout out to you, girl. You did that. Um, All right. Enough of the free publicity. Yeah. That's it for black shit, because I'm, I'm sick of talking about... Dumb shit. <sighs> yep. All right, y'all. We're moving on to I Discovered... Yeah, I just want to tell y'all that my soul is happy. <sighs> I can rest peacefully now because she's back. <laughs> I just, I just want y'all to know, I because I'm so passionate, and I just want y'all to know that you basic bitches could never, like, you could never. Do y'all understand that she's an icon? She's a living icon. Do you get it? Missy Elliott is back. She got an EP out called Iconology. Oh, man, y'all, it's only five songs on there. Technically four. I mean, yeah, technically four, because one, uh, an Why I Love You, yes, is acapella. acapella. <laughs> but I <laughs> I just love it so much. I've listened to that goddamn EP probably like 40 times. It is unhealthy, but <laughs> I can't help it. She got the video is out for a uh, throw it back and it's it's literally Missy Elliott's style. Like no one can duplicate her. She <clears throat> she already said it in her song. There ain't gonna ever be another Missy Elliott because I don't care which one of y'all basic hoes try to copy her. You're gonna be basic all the time. And you need to know that because it's Missy Elliott. The fuck? So I've been listening to Missy Elliott, like, all week. Non-stop. Non-stop. Since the thing dropped. <laughs> Bars. <laughs> Y'all heard that. And I've been, like, way left field. This is left. I've been listening to nothing but gospel music because I needed God in my life. Mm. So, and then Missy was like, I dropped my album, and I was like, okay, you know, press pause, Tasha Cobb Leonard. Uh, I got to... <laughs> Listen to Missy over here. Thank you, girl. You know, we're going to put a praise on it, but I'm going to put this praise on Missy Elliott because she mm -hmm. dropped her album. Wow. EP. Wow. 
That's what I'd be listening to. Wow. That's literally it. Not another single thing. Eric, what you been listening to? So I wrote my stuff down because I didn't want to forget anything because I've been listening to a lot of stuff and other oh, stuff. that's smart. Okay. Um, so obviously Missy's EP, listen to that. It's, it's, if, you, if you know Missy, it's a Missy, it's a Missy project. If you don't know Missy, listen to it and then go back and listen to all the discographies and smack yourself and not know who Missy is. Uh, Rapsley dropped probably the best rap album of the year thus far with Eve. I super ain't dope. Today. Yeah, that's super my, dope. On my, super on dope. My list. Super dope. Really dope. Uh, she had Queen of Teeth on that spin bars again. That was super dope to hear that. Oh, the whole shit. the whole album is really sounds amazing. It's a really empowerment for black African black women. She so with the titles and just what she's speaking on and the body and all that stuff. So it's a beautiful, well made album by uh, Rhapsody. Raphael Sadiq dropped Jimmy Lee. Damn. That's another dope project I really like front to back. It's kind of. I don't know. The, I, don't, I don't. I'm not in love with how he did the song selections, but musically everything sounds good, and, and it's short to the point. It's like less than 40 minutes, so it's really a good listen, song wise. And I mean, if Raphael Sadiq can't do you wrong. Uh, little brother, a independent hip hop group. Uh, a lot of people may not know who they are. Made a lure. Watch. They dropped the album. They reunited. Put that out. That was pretty dope. I didn't know Luna. She's an R&B artist. She put out an album. I think last week. Mm-hmm. So I listened to that last. The past week, Rogue, it's a lot of breakup songs on there. I don't know she, I, I mean, to look at some going interviews. Some I was also, I want to see if she did some interviews, see what she's been going through. There's a lot of like breakup songs on there. She's like she's going back thinking about either past relationships or current relationships, but it's a lot of breakup songs on there. It's a, it's a good, decent listen, but it's a lot of breakup songs. BJ the Chicago Kid, 1123, it's a really dope, solid R&B album. I saw that. I it's really know. dope. So I guess I'm going to listen to a lot of R&B stuff and a mix of hip hop. So it was a lot of new stuff, really. And then just a uh, shameless promotion, uh, New Music Monday, my conversation with R.B. Valentine. That'll be up, obviously, with the release of this podcast. So that'll be available everywhere. You can uh, listen to podcasts. And that actually got me thinking with Rhapsody's album and Missy's album. That got me thinking, like, this maybe can be like a potential question of the week. Because I feel like I was seeing people talk about, like, women rappers and stuff like that. So I was just thinking, like, Front to back, uh, best women's rap album. Not this, not uh, straight like straight bars. Not singing, not a mixture of singing and rapping. Minimal singing at best, but best women's rap album from a woman artist. Yeah, that's something to think about. I don't know. I can't get an answer <laughs> right now. But I don't know. I gotta think about that. Because I mean, and side note for every dude that's out here talking about they tired of hearing women talk about hot girl summer and all Shut this and that, ass for, up. that, that. But if you saying Fuck. all that, but and you ain't listened to Rhapsody's album yet, don't say a fucking thing else. Shut that shit up. That specifically, but if you ain't listen to Rhapsody <laughs> album, don't say shit at all because that's that's a lot of good content coming from bars also, but also you can support the women empowering themselves and. You know, saying it, I'd rather hear the women say that shit than hear niggas talking about, man, I'm gonna smack that ass up and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, niggas out here talking about they having a hot boy summer or a city boy summer or whatever the fuck y'all doing. That what shit else? sounds suspect as fuck. Okay. I mean, live your life. Live your best life. Yeah. And on the book side, I actually read two books. Uh, the Jordan Rules. This was like an old book, like uh, going back to like when the Bulls won their first championship. Mm. Talking about how much they hated Michael Jordan, really, in a way, because he didn't pass the ball. Basically, how they didn't really get along as a team until they went into the playoffs because Jordan didn't trust them because they kept losing. <laughs> how Phil Jackson right. tried to, they were trying to get him to get, uh, really understand and buy into the triangle offense. It was really, it's a really good read because he's the guy who really goes to every game, regular season, postseason, finals, and you just see the progression of them evolving and. Michael Jordan, okay, I'm a, f- I'm a buy in, and it just all parallel. And despite all this turmoil, they kept winning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Scotty Pippen wanted a new deal. Everybody wants a new deal. Everybody's contracts up. Everybody thinks they're underpaid. And it's like, all this, and y'all keep winning. Nobody likes management, but y'all keep winning. So it's like, wow, this is like really a good book. It's, uh, it's like almost 400 pages, but it's worth every page. It's really good. And I'm finished reading this book called The Stoop, which is kind of similar to your book, Mimi. It's like this, uh, <laughs> Jewish white guy 
talking about his life growing up as a kid in the Bronx in the 60s, mm-hmm. particularly during the time when Martin Luther King was assassinated and him being living in a black, predominantly black neighborhood. So him being the fear of his life and how his black friend saved his life. And just, he tells seven particular stories about his childhood growing up in the Bronx between his parents, his Stephanie parents, his sister, his brother, that's how he grew up and how he is the way he is. So it's told in a very truthful way, if not really in a comedic sense like your book is, but it's just mm. telling his true story. So it's like less than 200 pages, so I'm still finished reading that, but it's a really good read also. All right, Eric, you've been busy. I got to keep my mind focused <laughs> um, with some things, but yeah, I've been busy. I have not had a chance to read any books. I did order some new ones, but um, TV shows, Let's see. I think this week I was able to catch up on some TV shows. So, of course, I had to catch up on Queen of the South, which... Oh, yeah. Man. I got a... How many seasons are, is that in? They're season four right okay, now. Okay, so I would have to go way back to even try to watch that. But, uh, well, the first three seasons are on Netflix. Okay. So, I had to catch up on Queen of the South. Um, caught up on Pose, which is one of my favorite shows. That last, that season finale was everything. There's no fallback? Hmm? There's no fallback? Um, I think so. I think it did come back on. But I still, I've never watched Snowfall, but oh, okay. I, I think it did start back. Um, uh, what else? Pearson? Yeah, I gotta um, catch this up. I saw some of this episode they did, but I didn't catch the whole thing, so I gotta catch up with that a little bit. But that's I still Pearson for me, uh, Southside. I'm still Sherman Showcase, the show I talked about on the last podcast. I'm still right. trying to get that. It it's funny the guys who made Sherman Showcase are saying guys who made uh, Southside. So Southside uh. is funny to me, and then Sherman Showcase like it's kind of like I get what they're trying to do, but it's not necessarily on laugh my ass off funny to me. Right, and speaking of not necessarily laugh my ass off, I did watch Black Lady Sketch, Black uh, Lady a Black Sketch, Lady sketch show. show. I'm like, what's it called? <sighs> I'm still on the fence, y'all. I'm still waiting to laugh, but okay. <laughs> they trying. They they, they are. Trying. So I mean, keep trying, y'all. I'll, I like the I like the I'll Robin D, I like the Robin D's B T shirt. I knew it wasn't gonna last long, but I did like that. I mean, okay. I know you wasn't a big fan. It's not that I wasn't a big fan, but I just knew that they were going to cancel her show because of the ratings. Obviously. Um, But this Black Lady sketch show. yeah, I'm It comes on what, Fridays? Or? One of them days. I thought it was on the weekend, some shit. I don't know. I don't know, but I need y'all to either get some more additional writers. I think y'all just need some writers from the hood. That's what I think. Mm. I think y'all got too many black women living in Calabasas and shit or wherever y'all live. And y'all been, you know, detached from hood activities for Mm. a minute. And so, you know, if y'all need some hood ass writers, contact me because I currently live in the hood. And I can tell you some shit, okay? Yeah, that's that's what y'all need. Who it is, writers? There's so some people, including yourself, there's some people on Instagram that could could have reached out to and got them to help with writing and being on, on that show that I follow that I think, besides just the Instagram funny stuff, that are legitly funny women. Well, yeah, we're not. We, um, yes, women are funny too. Um, oh, Tiff- I, I'm, I'm, at, at some point I check it out. But I saw Tiffany Harris put out a comedy special, like highlighting oh, yeah. uh, uh, her performance. Th- I think I still have one episode left because it's about five uh, stand up. Right. Um, it's a series, but mm. it's uh, five episodes, five different comedians. Uh, so far, watching it, my favorite has been Flame Monroe, <laughs> who's funny as fuck. And. Uh, <laughs> Aida Rodriguez. Aida, Aida Margarita Rodriguez. Um, she's funny as fuck to me. So, uh, yeah, I got one last episode to watch. I, I watched that. Um, shout out to my little brother who got me watching Black Lightning. I did nah. start that because uh. I, I, I wasn't watching it, but now that's my shit. You like it? I love that show. So, um, shout out to that. I'm catching up. I'm still on the first season, but I'm almost finished. I'm getting through that. And, I mean, of course, there's been some other shows, but I think those were, like, my main ones. Um, Queen Sugar, definitely caught up on that. And I actually like the new show Ambitions on the own on, on network, uh, EP'd by Will Packer. Oh. 
Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, one of those... Uh, Is that the one with Robin Givens? Yeah, okay. Robin Givens, Brian, Brian White. White. It kind of reminds me of Greenleaf, not the premise of the show, but the way it's shot. Mm. So it's shot really well, and that's why I'm watching it. So it's not like one of them cheap-ass... I don't want to say no names, but it don't it don't look cheap. Okay? <laughs> I mean, it's a real packer. Real packer stuff that you can question some of that his... Uh, Things he uh, put his name on, but they none of his stuff looks cheap. No, it doesn't. And um, uh, speaking of things that don't look cheap, this has nothing to do with nothing. I just couldn't think of another segue. Wow! But shout out to Brian White, who's one of the actors on the show. Y'all know Brian White; he be in everything. Um, he responded to one of my tweets, and uh, I got some free tickets to a screening of a movie that he's doing here in Chicago. Nice forgot what the name of the movie is but it's like september 6th so he was just like you know if you live in chicago inbox me i'll give you free tickets so shout out to you sir nice i'll be at that um premiere um i think that's it like the main shows that i just really had to catch up on music um oh missy and gospel because they go to, missy is gospel do y'all understand she is the gospel like the the fuck I know I shouldn't have said that after that but y'all get what I'm trying to do y'all get what I'm trying to say you you got me okay cool bam I think that's it Eric did you discover anything else that was it all right books movies TV I, I, oh any I, I, movies um uh, nah not any movies uh I was meaning to go catch some plays, but I haven't had time to do that. And I, at some point, I got to get back to uh, listening to more podcasts. So if anybody got any good podcasts, just uh, either hit up adsvibes at gmail.com or rea4radio at gmail.com. Just give me some good podcasts to uh, regularly tune in and listen to. Yes, I really, I mean, I put something on Twitter asking people in IG, you know, what podcast were they listening to? Because I'm not trying to shade anybody else's podcast because I know, you know when I first started, you know, I was out here struggling with this audio. But a lot of the podcasts, the quality of it does not sound great. So for me, like if I initially turn on the podcast and it just doesn't sound great to me, I'm like instantly turning it off. Same here. It could be a great podcast with good content, but I can't pay I can't focus because of how it sounds. So y'all recommend some good podcast that's of quality and has good content. Um I mean I'll keep searching, but it's kinda hard to find it's so many like, yeah it's, so many. it's a million of it's them it's like the new music industry basically everybody right. thinks they could be a podcaster and so you gotta you know then they're trying to figure out how can i make money doing this I, i'm I, I hate to say it, i'm tired of people asking how, how you make money doing podcasts i'm not making money doing this yet and yeah we do it because we want to exactly do it just because like you, you love just it just like you do your music career like how are you making money doing your music career kid i'm not making no money okay then shut the fuck up <laughs> shut the fuck up <laughs> Nah, keep keep doing y'all shit, y'all. Y'all, y'all, gonna, y'all gonna make y'all money at some point. <laughs> all right, keep doing that shit. Um, all right, y'all. That's it for I discovered. I don't think I discovered anything else. You know, did I discover? Yep, nope. That was it. That's it. Y'all know what? I like. I did discover grapefruit um, shandy. Y'all know those beers, the shandies, the summer shandies by the lining. Lining Cougar or Lining, what the fuck is the name of those people? Some with a Lining Coog, Lining Krug, <laughs> Lining. I don't know. I can't remember. But they got a grapefruit shandy. The shit is delicious. It's beer. That's it. That's what I discovered. That's the end of that. We're moving on. Um, y'all, topic of the week. I'm excited to bring this back. We're going to do situations part two. Um, because the first time we did it, you know, I enjoyed it. I had fun. We need to bring like some suspenseful like music for this. I know. We d- oh, right, like right in here. Mm-hmm. This is where we need mm-hmm. the music. Mm-hmm. I'm a or the or the Sally Jesse Raphael theme. The Safi <laughs> Sa- Safi Sally Jesse Raphael. I tried to put in music the last time, so the last episode it was something. 
um, where we were doing like that. So I did put it in. It was so funny, though. So if y'all checked out that last episode, y'all know what we're talking about. Because the shit was hilarious. It was so random. But um, I did my job. I inserted sound effects. Inserted. That sounds so sexual. All right. I take it back. It's, it's a lot going on. All right, y'all. So getting back, like I said, to uh, topic of the week. This week, again, we're bringing back part two uh, situations. Because those last situations that we talked about, you know what? They were deep. They were real deep. So we're going to get into some new ones this week. Um, Eric, you went first last time, right? Yeah, ladies All first right. this time. Ooh, ladies first, ladies first. Shout out to Queen Latifah on their Rhapsody album, which I ain't listened to yet, but I'm going to get to it. Yeah, listen to it. The whole thing is wild, but that one where Queen Latifah just came in effortlessly, effortlessly and killed it. Let me find out Queen still got bars. She still got bars. Okay, then. All right, Queen. She can sing and do bars. She, Queen Latifah does everything. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to just be. I'm trying to <laughs> just do everything. We're in an Academy Award and a Grammy at the same damn time. At, and at a Tony. The same. And an Emmy. So, <laughs> God damn, Queen. <laughs> Out here winning shit just because she can. And then going and disappearing and shit. Spending time on yachts and shit. Because she could do that. With your better half. Like, damn. I want to be on a yacht with my better half. <laughs> you said you'd be on a yacht with your ex. You know what, y'all? Before we, we getting started I changed, early. I changed my mind. Listen, I changed my mind. I would you not. You retract your statement. I retract my statement. I would not go on a vacation with my ex. <laughs> you know, I just I had an epiphany last week. I was just like, I really don't ever want to see you again in my whole fucking life. Why? I. You, it was nothing. It wasn't even like a, a bad situation. Oh, okay. You know how you just. Have an epiphany at okay. a really random moment. It's like, no, nah, I can't imagine us ever really being together. I had one of those epiphanies. Like that damn Taylor Swift song just came in my head. We're never ever ever getting we back together. Again. Getting back together. together. We. <laughs> I mean, because we're not. Because I was just like, what in the entire fuck was I thinking? I just and it, it was real. It, it sunk in. Oh, we forget Taylor Swift album came out. Fuck. I think that deserves a moment of silence. We haven't done that yet, so. <laughs> it's going to be another number one album in the country, but still just a moment of silence. I just to give her an extended yeah. moment of silence. You go, All right. girl. <clears throat> Do what you do, little girl. All right, y'all, getting back to these situations. Right. First situation is, oh, this is interesting. Ba -ba -ba. I checked my bank account, and there was a $10,000 deposit in there. Mm. What, what would I do if I just checked my bank account, and there was a $10,000 deposit in it? I'm transferring that shit to my <laughs> other bank account <laughs> so they won't take it back. Do you understand me? And you you can I mean you could put my current bank account negative ten thousand. I'm never paying that shit back. That's what I would do in real life. At this point, I'm even I'm not gonna try to be a good person. And if I see it's ten thousand dollars in my bank account, somebody that's I don't know, the bank probably made an error. I don't know. I'm transferring that shit immediately. To my other bank account. That's my final answer. That's what I'm doing. Eric, <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> wow. Well, you don't have to be like me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a part of me would say do that, but then the other part of me would be like, I, knowing me, I would fucking put my investigative hat on figuring out what the fuck happened. And if this on the bank's fault, if this the bank's wrongdoing, then I'm not going to let them know about it. Like, I'm just going to okay. do what you said, just, put, just flip this into another bank is still like oh well you gave this it was in my account so i just took it out so oh well it's gone now you can't do anything about it listen immediately deuces i'm a i mean i'm a, as i'm investigating the scene where it's coming from it's already taken out of the account i'm just i'm just backtracking making sure this don't come back on me i don't need to see where it came from because then that's gonna be some other stuff that i know that i don't want to know because when y'all 
when interrogate you, yeah, me. When you, well, yeah. When you look for things, you're going to find things you weren't expecting to find. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know. And that's the honest answer. I don't know. I just logged into my account. I saw it was there and uh, took that shit out. <laughs> I'm thinking that's, about the Steve Harvey episode when uh, they're having the Cedric and Levita was telling him that I think reporting that he didn't until the last minute. Shout out to Sid. Seti. Seti Bear and Levita Allen's A. Jenkins. The best two characters on that show. I mean. Besides Bullethead and Romeo. Oh, good old Bullethead. <laughs> Bullethead, Ed, boy. All right, Eric, what's your situation? Well, that was easy. So we solved that shit because we're trash people. <laughs> We're keeping the money, the final okay. answer. I just got married one year ago, and my wife <laughs> gained 60 pounds. Oh, fuck. Yeah. So this is this must be the life of uh, Antoine Fuqua or something. <laughs> <laughs> First off, Eric, this is rude. Jesus Christ. That was rude. I know. Jeez. But after saying that, I would say, okay, and... Uh, I see. We're gonna have to have a talk about <laughs> what. No, we're gonna have to have a talk and see and make sure she's okay. Make sure she's good. I'm not gonna say and tell her to lose weight. If she wants to be that weight, then I'm gonna love her regardless. If for sick Bella, Bella works. Like if, I mean, I fell in love with her for. I'm assuming more than just her looks. I'm I, at this point in my life. I'm not even looking at like, damn, she got. She looks like a ten for me to talk to. Her, I don't give a fuck about. I mean, I care about the looks, but that's not all I care about. Like, I want to have like actual intimate connection with you like we can have a conversation for like five hours and it time just flies by like stuff like that like you can make me laugh like and vice versa like we just really connect on an, other, another level besides just sexual connection so i'm looking beyond that so if she wants to gain that 60 pounds and that's cool i hopefully she's not pregnant and she doesn't tell me about it but other than that i mean she can do what she got to do we're going to talk about it and we're going to be like all right it's going we're going to get on this workout routine together if you want to if you want to, right. if not, then just do you. But I don't want you to get into a bad situation and get into bad health either. Get into the bad habits. That's nice, Eric. So what would you do if your That's, husband gained you are, 60 pounds? Again, you are so noble. And it is great that you're such a supportive person. My However, husband gained 60 pounds. i will be like, nigga, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Wait, what's <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna divorce my ass right there. Like what? I'm gonna be like, nigga, what's wrong with you? I'm not gonna do that. If my husband gained sixty pounds after one year of marriage, we're definitely gonna have a sit down yeah. if he's ready because it's it's something Something's deeper right. is going on. Exactly. And so it's my job to help and support my husband. Mm-hmm. Um, get to the bottom of it or overcome whatever he's going through or it's my job to get him some help because you just don't gain, gain 60, 60 pounds, pounds if you're fine. Year, right. Something's right. going on. And ultimately that person has to have to wants to get the help. You, you right. can't force them to just be like, I'm here for you when you want to do that. But I'm just, we have to have that talk and see where you're at with it or what's going on. Because apparently I'm missing something. Right. And I'm like, you, I've been missing something for a whole oh, year. year. <laughs> so I I've definitely will feel shitty about myself. Like I haven't noticed you and what you're going right. through for a whole year. Right. So, I mean, y'all, sometimes I w- do the right thing. You have a heart. Sometimes, you know, it's it's in there. It's something in my heart. <laughs> my favorite Michelle A song. The only one I can tolerate and listen to. <laughs> something in my heart. Something in my heart. How the hell that little peacekey voice can sing like that? That's amazing. She was explaining something when, um, because it's always been amazing to me, her voice, because I thought she was faking it for me so too. long. Me too, me too. So when her movie came out, she went on the Wendy Williams show. She was she was explaining, like, why her voice was the way it was. Like, she speaks over her, what is it called? Larynx? Mm. Or la- larynx? Larynx. I think that's how you pronounce it. If not, my fault. I'm dumb. But she speaks over it and something else. But she was like, well, when she sings, it's it regular. regular. I was just like, Cause the fuck? Michael Jackson was faking his voice for decades. Like the and little I child. I was like, like Michael, <laughs> you're a grown-ass man, dog. What is this? You never had a childhood, okay? Leave him alone. Just, <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? That, that don't mean you got to talk like you a child. <laughs> Jesus, Michael, we got it. Damn, we on the phone. 
this Michael? Yeah, what the fuck you want? Then Michael Jackson. I'm like, Michael, G- Michael, G- Michael Jackson or is this Prince? <laughs> 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 the fuck? Now I ain't getting no more money. Fuck them niggas. This Prince. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, Mike's on the like, fuck Joe. Fuck Joe so bad. He not getting in my house. He dead to me. Tell him to make an appointment. <laughs> Yo, when he tell his daddy he had to make an appointment <laughs> to get into the house... <laughs> I was like, he's cruel than a motherfucker. <laughs> That's your daddy. He don't call him daddy. He call him Joe. Fuck Joe. Joe. <laughs> Fuck Joe. Joseph ass is like, y'all can't call me daddy. Call me Joseph. <laughs> I'm like, what kind of fooly wine is this shit? Y'all calling Catherine Catherine enough? No, mama. Mother. Uh, woo, that family. I tell y'all about those good old Jacksons. Jackson. All right, y'all. Next situation. Um, you're about to get married, and your ex that you still love said they want you back. <laughs> Why do we have to love our ex still, though? If we still love our I ex, I feel like there's mean? a lot of people who still has that one person, that one ex that they really love so and got away. If that person comes out of nowhere and you about to get married, and you're about to get married. Like, this sound like your movie. Or you it, still, yeah, sound like your film. Got this from. <laughs> I got this shit from. I see. You. I see, you. I see, you. <laughs> see what I did there? <laughs> um, in real life, I'm literally if I'm about to about to get married, and that one ex that I still love secretly that got away came. <sighs> I true y'all. It real. I don't know what the fuck I ever do in real life. I feel. I feel like I would definitely still go through with the marriage. I mean, because at this point, if I'm about to get married, we don't already sign these goddamn contracts and shit down at the city hall. We don't got our licenses. I mean, so technically, we're married. Um. I don't know. I got to think about that one. You made the question. I know, but I didn't think about it. God damn it, Eric. Let me be great. Just let me think about it. You go ahead. I'm thinking about it. What would you do? Like, I got an answer. Shit up. (laughs) (laughs) What would you do? Unfortunately, I have a feeling this is going to happen anyway. Actually, no, no, it does. No, it's not. No, it's not. I'm going to have access to it. I don't care about like that anymore. Telling me it still love me and want me back. But like, okay. I care for y'all, but that shit is over. Um, God if that, but, damn. But if that was to me, I would have to question how much I love the person I'm about to marry and make sure that I'm doing this for the right reasons, even if all the paperwork is signed and everything. Like, we, if I'm really truly in love with my ex still and right. somewhere lusting that we were still together and having dreams or some shit about us being together, then I have to question, um, am I doing the right thing? So that's where I had to have a sit down discussion with myself first, and t- I would talk, talk, sit down myself, and show I'm doing the right thing, and then I had to talk to my fiance slash wife, let her and be honest and open about what's going on. But what if you came to the conclusion that, yeah, I weighed all these options, and I really don't love you as much as I love my ex? Damn, that's hard. Because that's what I'm sitting over here thinking, like, not, in real life, what would I, I do? Can't, I can't go into a marriage knowing that I'm fully in love with someone else. I mean, listen, that, that's, that's, no, that's, that's, well, that's the logical aspect of it because I think a lot of people think that, right. but then they meet and then somebody they, else and, and they feel like, oh, I'm in love with you too. But I, I feel like people, I think that's part of settling that people don't know that they're settling because and, they really truly believe that they're in love with that person. I haven't settled in relationships. I've I haven't settled with anything I do. Like, I feel like once I feel like that's coming on, if I'm like, okay, I need to have a change coming, a true change approach. So I just feel like at this point in my life, if I feel like I'm just settling with someone else, then that means I'm probably not truly happy anyway because I'm just going to settle. Like, why right. am I settling when ultimately someone who I truly want to be with finally openly admits they want to be with me? So why settle? But, but what if... Is it, sa- no, is it being a safe I bit? agree with you on that point because um, I'm not settling for shit, but... Like, in this situation, like, you're about to get married and then your ex that you still loves come back. Like, I feel like there's a lot of people who probably feel like, yeah, they did fall in love with somebody else and they genuinely they love did, this yeah. person. But then they also thought, I'm never going to see that ex again because that's yeah. over. I mean, but that love wasn't, the love obviously isn't the same as how you feel for that ex because that was like maybe that once in a lifetime. I don't know if this is right, true or not, so but that's, we, we're supposed to have like three like loves in our lives that truly like impact us where if we see them again, it just, these feelings just come about. I believe that because I have two. <laughs> I have two. Okay. So, okay, third person, what the fuck you at? That's probably, gonna, I'm hoping that's the husband. Yeah, come on. <laughs> I'm, come on. Uh, you around the corner somewhere. Just come on. <laughs> Um, I don't know. 
this is a really tough question. It is. It it because in in real life, like it's easy to say, right I, now, would, yeah, do I would do this, but especially when not being in that situation right, right now. Exactly. So that's easy, but geez. you really won't know until if, unless it actually happens. I hope it doesn't happen, but. I don't know. There are people, there are women in my life who I would honestly, if they, if they text me right now, like I broke over so and so, and I think I want to give it a shot with you. Honestly, there's only one that I would say for sure. Like, all right, let's do it. Okay. But I'm single right now, so it's not like I'm in a relationship with anybody. But if like if I was in any other relationship with something and I wasn't like truly feeling them, like I was feeling like her, and she just mm-hmm. hit me up with that, and I'd be like, all right, let's do it. I'm here. Yeah, that's me. I got one person. Both of us single. <laughs> I don't know why the fuck we can't get together. Um, call me, <laughs> call me, boo. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm put this question to the side because that's tough. That's real life tough. Because I would like to think that I would go on with my marriage because it's like I love this person. This is my new life. But then at the same time, it would be like, but what if this this is the ex that. I truly love deep within my soul. And then he came back and was like, hey, sorry that I was, you know, gone yeah, and so asshole. No, I'm, I'm, I've changed now and I want you. Right. And it's like, I feel like a lot of people deep down desire that that ex that got away. Because it's like, well, shit, I can't find you. I don't know where you at. So that's why I moved on. Mm. Okay, yeah, We putting that one to the side. Because there uh some tough shit right there. I know why I wrote these questions and shit. You wrote the questions that you ain't thinking about. No, I didn't. Okay, next one. This old man slash woman, well, this old woman offered me a thousand dollars to make out in f- <laughs> in front of her ex. Would you do it? What would you do if an old lady? And now we're not talking about like you know eighty. I was gonna like, say what age like we talking? Like a cougar or okay. something. No, maybe like fifty, sixty. We gonna go oh. with fifty six. Damn, Eric. <laughs> she gonna Maybe be fifty six. Okay, okay. She, if she looking Angela Bass is sixty. First off, we all making our Angela Bassett <laughs> shit. We don't care if she didn't offer us a thousand dollars. We're making out <laughs> with I will make out with Angela Bassett for free. Do you understand me? You about to break the internet. Because she's fine. Okay? At six I think she just turned sixty one. Sixty or sixty one. I, whatever age, she fine. Then the motherfucker, and I'll make out with you for free, Angela Bassett. Um, we're gonna say, yeah, she's up there. She's like fifty five to sixty. She's hot though. She's she's good looking. She, she could be hot. I mean, that's fine. Fifty five, sixty. She's just an older woman. And she offered you a thousand dollars to make out with her in front of her ex, so that she could make him jealous. Would you do it? All y'all are doing is making out. You just got to make out with her. And then after y'all finish making out, she's going to be like, okay, I don't have to ever see you again. I feel like it's going to lead into something else So after that. Oh, fuck. Not for me, nigga. For old man, it was like, I just need you to make out with me for $1,000. Fuck yeah. Brush your teeth. Floss. <laughs> get your tongue. Brush those lips. Pop a little mint. I'm, I'm we finna make the fuck out. Do you understand? For $1,000? <laughs> And to make your ex jealous, I don't give a fuck about her. I don't even know her. I don't, I don't give two shits and a bunny rabbit. We, I'm about to slob you down well, out here in front well, of your ex. What if you're in a like, good, faithful relationship? I'm about to slob you down, even okay? Even if you're married. I'm about to slob you down. And my goddamn For husband. For $1,000. Yes, he better shut the fuck up because I just got our mortgage. <laughs> well, mortgage is paid this month. I didn't have sex with nobody. Do you understand? Wow. All I did was make out. I'm trying to be a better man, so I'm trying not to be, like, saying hell yeah to that. So a part of me is like, yeah, I'll fucking do it if she hot. But I'm trying to be a better man, y'all. So I'm, I'm trying not to. I'm trying to be like, nah. I'm trying to take the high road and be like, nah, I can't do that. Listen. But the, the truthfulness is I will absolutely do it if she's hot. And like I said before, honestly, it would lead to something else because I'm a great kisser. And people, women, all, any, women who kiss me end up wanting to do more after that. Okay, first off, Eric, calm down. It's just, just just be calm, a great kisser. You know, if um if one of them fine granddaddies was like, I'm gonna pay you a thousand dollars. Yeah, fine granddaddy. I do it for free. Y'all know them granddaddies that be on the internet 
that be like 55 years old and they be looking better than their sons. First off, they're not even 55, more than likely. I mean, that's fine. 45. I mean, granddaddies nowadays are 30. Exactly. So that's fine. Okay. But Just the, like the grandmas old grandmas are now 30 and 35. If it's one of the older granddaddies that's like 55 and he fine, I'll make out with you for free, sir. And you have to give me the money because you're fine. Wow. I mean, y'all can judge your mama. <laughs> Don't judge me. You still got to make that into a T-shirt. Judge your mama. All right. Eric, you just picked that last one? Yes. All right. For $1,000. Hell yeah. I feel like that's a low ball number. I mean, all I'm doing is make it. We don't, I mean, I mean it, it could be, be like a 30 second make out. It could be a 15 second make out. They Wait. just need to get enough video. <laughs> you know, they just need to have the X. No, no, I'm thinking them. about it. Like, yeah, a 15 second make out session for $1,000. That's worth it. <laughs> Fuck yeah. We, listen, you know, you need some tongue right, give me action. The, give me the cat. Give me the money first, then we can do it. Yeah, because that's transaction. Right. Put you gonna cash out cash me or out you gonna me give me, me this cash. cash? Right. Okay. And then I will make out your ass forty five seconds. Yeah, right, give me point. fifteen minutes. Make sure that all these dollars are. Make sure all these bills are legit. To do my uh-huh. marking and stuff. My marker. And let me inspect your mouth. Make sure you ain't got no yeah, sores or anything in there. Mouthwash, y'all. This, you know, chew some gum, get all that going. All that. We're gonna floss. Make sure you right, know exactly. Ain't no old stuff in there. Right. Make your mouth stink. Smell like ass. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, next situation. Oh. My best friend walked in on me giving head. <laughs> Has this happened to you before? <laughs> First off, Eric, no. What? How, no. How? 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 Maybe how? it's by accident. You know how you be like, okay, so here's what I was thinking. This has never happened to me. But I was like, Ready? maybe what if you're at a party? And you you and your best friend are at the party and I guess some spontaneous shit happens. Yeah. And, you, and then and your you, best friend accidentally walked in on you give a head. <laughs> and so the question the situation was your your best friend. The situation is my best friend walked in on, on me giving, giving head. head. So what what, what what would you do? Did you finish <laughs> the job? <laughs> Fuck no. I'll be like, this is ruined. If I'm thinking about my best friend and how trash of a person she is. I would that situation would never die down. It would be so fucking awkward. I, I can't even. It would be awkward, but then we would laugh at it. At some point. No, like immediately. Okay. But what would I do? I would I would just immediately stop. I'm not that person that's gonna be like, "Ooh, look at me, best friend. Look what I can do." I'm I'm not that person. No, if my best friend walked in on me giving head, it's gonna be awkward as fuck. I'm not gonna be embarrassed. We're fucking grown people. Why would I be embarrassed? We all have sex. Um, it's gonna be so awkward. I'm gonna feel awkward as fuck. That's. I mean, I wouldn't do anything but stop giving head. <laughs> that's it. Mm. And I'm like. Sorry, guy, but uh, you got to go get this elsewhere. I was almost there. I mean, my bad. You mm, go finish the job yourself, or whatever you need to do. But uh, right now, I got to go explain to my best friend that I, I am a Christian. Uh, I was about you go and, and, and blush, brush your teeth and you know, whatnot. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm just going to walk to her. You're just going to walk to her after that. Yeah. And, with, just speak with, and, and, and speak. With dick on my mouth. Exactly. Like, that's like, hey, girl. Just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to do it just like that. Hey, girl, let me just tell you something. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry that you walked in on me giving head. <laughs> Smell all of this. Um. Eric, what would you do? Your best friend walked in on you giving head. If my best friend walked on me giving head. What would you do? Obviously, I would stop. Uh, first off, I wonder why the fuck the door wasn't locked. I mean, listen, sometimes you forget to do shit. Sometimes you be at houses where the doors don't lock and you think they do. 
in the heat of the moment, just like fuck yeah. it, who gonna come like, in? I locked the What's door. What's the worst thing that can happen? You, you locked the door, but you didn't close it. What <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Um, I mean, I don't really have to stop and get up and 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 try to <laughs> explain what happened in there. At some point, like you said, we'll have a laugh about it. That's really it. I mean, it's not like an embarrassing moment. We are, we all are adults. We've done this before. Right, but I'm not even explaining. I just feel like... Well, I mean, like not explaining, but it's like talking like, well, shit happens, so shit happens. We just forgot to lock the door, so... <laughs> your you, bad. Yeah, you're, why the fuck you, you come in here? You, like, first I'm like, what the fuck? Close the like, door. I was looking for you, and I didn't know where you was at. I was busy. I was busy. busy. <laughs> Get the fuck out. First off, this situation is not for those best friends who be having sex together and shit. First be off, like, ew. I, I feel like there's so many people out here who just be like in a room or they, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck y'all be doing. Watching each other have sex mm. or having sex with each other. It's not for you because mm. we know what you would do. Mm. Okay? This is for us wholesome people. <laughs> All right? Wholesome. We're wholesome. But yeah, just... uh clean up and uh we just laugh about like damn i bet i thought the door was locked what the fuck you was looking for you know you're bad you, you in my vibe but shit i got i, I got i enjoy myself <laughs> and then i'll be like um uh, so do, is there anything that i should improve on like was i doing it right do you knowing think your best right? friend she'll be like girl you did that all wrong <laughs> <laughs> she'll walk she'll open the door but like, bitch what the fuck you doing you ain't doing that right um and then i'll be like you know what fuck you because i did that what I did do <laughs> is that. Okay. Thanks. We got some more situations in here. We do. Is it your turn, Eric? Uh, I think so. All right. How many ahead. more are we doing? I don't know. Where we at? 115. Okay. We could do like two more. Okay. Two apiece. What's that situation? This is a hard one because I don't know just what happened. But my friend let me borrow her kiss or her car and it got towed. Ooh, so am I? Am I a person? Am I? Am, am I the reason it got towed, or it just got towed yeah, because you you parked it somewhere, you did something, and that shit got towed? <laughs> I mean, obviously, if it's my fault, then I have to man up and admit it and try to pay pay and pay it off to get it untold. I mean, that's really it. Listen, I w- I just want y'all to know my best friend, like y'all know, like I know her, if. She let me borrow her car. It would be by God's grace <laughs> because she don't let nobody borrow her car, number one. And if she did let me borrow her car and then I got it towed, I will be a little bit scared. For your life? Yeah, because she'd be looking at people with this murderous look. I, I, I've noticed that. It makes me nervous. Even still, you know, to this day. We've been friends for a long time. <laughs> like, nigga, I ain't scared of you. But, you know, I don't know what you've been thinking in your mind. You look like you're going to murder somebody. Mm. Um, If she let me borrow her car and it got towed, the fuck? I I mean, of course, I'm going to be like, all right, I got to go get this shit out of the the tow yard. Got to pay all these fees. Here go your car back, girl. Um, I'm going to be salty as fuck because you know how much money that is? That's that's gonna be a lot of money, but I'm I'm gonna go get the car back, pay all the fees, and just be salty as fuck. And if I ain't got the money to pay it, then I'm gonna have to do something strange for a little piece of change, so I can get the, so I can get your car back out because she ain't gonna pay that shit because she gonna be like, oh I didn't do that, you did. This sounds like a porn movie waiting to happen. Do wait what? If it do, hasn't been done already, do something strange for a little piece of change. That's a. Is that right. a legit name title? I I don't know. I don't know where you're going with this, Eric. <laughs> I said I just said it sounded like a porn movie. I don't know. Wait, I have I got my got my best friend Kato. Oh my, how can I, what can I do to? Get oh, to, the the yeah. premise of it. Yeah. My car got towed. towed. Well, my I friend's mean, car got. Oh no, that's my best friend's car. I have to get, get it back. back. Please help me. <laughs> Did y'all hear my porn voice? <laughs> I can do porn voiceovers. Call me. Um, <laughs> all right, y'all. Next situation. My job found out that my degree I told them about is fake. <laughs> Listen, it's people out here buying fake degrees. That's why I put this down here. If my job found out that my degree, first off, my degrees are not fake. But if they found out that my degrees were fake, I would literally just quit 
and just walk out that bitch because at this point, I don't need that embarrassment in my life. But what if you're doing a damn good job at the job? If I'm doing a damn good job and y'all ain't going to say shit about it, then, I mean, what the fuck you want me to do? Get a real one? You going to pay for that because I'm not going back to school? The fuck? I mean, that that that's what I would do. If they found out about it and they didn't say anything, like, bad, okay, I'm still working this job. The fuck y'all want me to do? Go get a certification or some shit? I mean, because, listen, somebody going to have to sit in this class for me because I'm not going back to school. All right, I have taken my time to buy this goddamn degree online, and that took a lot of effort. But if they did find out about the degree and that it was fake, and then they were like, you know, we can't have you here, I'm quitting before y'all can fire me. No, you know what? I take it back. I'm going to let y'all fire me, but then I'm not going to ask y'all why specifically, because I need to get unemployment. So I take that back. Because, I mean, at that so point, I'm going to be that, out of a job. I was in that case, they're probably not going to fire you because they don't want you to get unemployment. <sighs> nah. Just fire if, me. If anything, they're going to say, so since you don't have a degree, we're going to have to drop your salary. No. If you drop my salary, I'm going to have to drop y'all. The fuck? We, I'm dropping y'all in this parking lot. Nigga, we fighting. Okay? Because uh, I can still do the same job without this goddamn degree. That's a whole other topic. Yes, it is. Unnecessary as degrees. Basically. Okay. Eric, what would you do if your job found out your degree was fake? Mm. I mean, <clears throat> if they come and talk to me about it, it's going to be like, shit, I won't get this job unless I show y'all this degree. Am I doing the job right? All right, then shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Let me do my job, but just fire me so I can get unemployment. I mean, basically. I mean, regardless, like- this is going on my damn resume. Yeah, because it's like, what else can you do? I mean, first off, who says it's fake? I need to clarify because the site that I bought this from said that they would and, never be able to know. <laughs> and it's y'all fucking fault for not knowing what a fake degree looks like or is. Like, God damn. I've been here two months. Y'all just figured this shit out. The fuck wrong with y'all? No, I've been here two motherfucking years. And y'all just figuring this <laughs> shit out. out. I didn't when it got a fake doctorate too. <laughs> Y'all, you know that? The fuck? That that's shit fu- cost me $150. I'm f- on my money back. That's a funny short story. Getting a fake doctorate? Nah, doctorate. Just going in and having, having a meeting like, yeah, we find out your degrees are fake. And like, hey, bitch, I just got this fake doctorate too. <laughs> you gonna fire <laughs> for that too? With somebody get mad, be like, oh, okay, you found out about my fake degrees? Greece? Be- okay, bitch, I've been I'm a here fake five years. Fuck. Y'all just found this shit out. I got a fake doctorate of philosophy, too. too. You knew that? No. <laughs> but I'm being here canceling the fuck out of people. <laughs> so shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> but I be canceling people, and, and they, they get my help. Okay. You going to revoke my license? So bitch. pay me or leave me the fuck alone. Pay me. The f- Ooh. Making me think about things. All mm. right. Eric, choose this last one before FBI comes storming in here and shit. Because we in here, you know, seeing illegal shit. Wow. Shut the fuck up. I found out that my mama took out a 25K loan in my name. Fucking shit. Okay. First off, in real life, that won't happen. But, (laughs) uh, yeah, I I really don't know what I would do. Because, uh... Obviously, it's had to happen at a young age, I'm assuming. No, well, it's not a particular age. It's but just like if you just, just found this out. And it's in my name, and now my credit is screwed up because of it. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I don't have to try to fight it to show that this was not, I was in my name, but I did not authorize this. I was a little child or whenever, whenever I didn't authorize this loan at all. This was done without <laughs> my knowledge, which would be a bitch to do. And obviously, we would have, I don't know if I would end my relationship with my mom, but we would have to have a talk about some things to figure out what the hell happened. Nah, fuck that. I'm fighting my mama. We finna fist fight. Jerry, what? Jerry. Yeah, I'm fighting you. Fuck is you taking out a $25,000 like loan a, Sounds like a Jerry Springer storyline. What did you need $25,000 for? Why you take it out in your husband <laughs> or the other kids? They ain't gonna never be shit. Okay, so it, the credit it ain't gonna matter. 
I'm I'm the one who's trying to do shit, and then you want to fuck up my. I'm dad. the one with the fake ass doctorate degree. You know, I spent two hundred and fifty dollars <laughs> on that goddamn doctorates, okay? And then you want to fuck up my credit. No, I'm fighting my mama. If I find out that my mama took out a twenty five thousand dollar loan in my name, I need twenty five thousand dollars back. So you need to pay me all the money you you from that loan plus interest, because. Mm. Obviously, she has to pay me back, too, of course. We you're going to pay me $25,000 back, and you're going to pay me this shit in two years. So you got to figure it out. Damn, you don't have a two-year plan? Yeah, because it took you 15 minutes to take that <laughs> shit out. So I'm being generous and giving you two years. Mm. Figure it out. And I'm you, you're going to tell me what the hell you spent $25,000 on. And we still fight. Mm. Because I, I just, I just want to fight my mom. It's the only time you'll be able to. And she can't really say nothing. She gonna see her try to whoop your ass. Can't whoop my ass. You stole from me. <laughs> you put me in debt. <laughs> you gotta take this ass whooping, mom. <laughs> wow. Um. Oh God, I forgot I, this one. I found out that my oldest sister is actually my mama. What kind of? <sighs> I think I was watching Orange Is the New Black. That's Jesus where that came Christ. from. If I found out that my oldest sister was actually my mama in real life, my oldest sister right now, well, no, she's not old enough to be. You know what? That when you from the south, all kind of shit be happening. If I found out that my oldest sister was my mama, <laughs> you moving around some furniture? <sighs> no, I think I would literally just be like in this. Headspace where I don't even know what's going on for a few days. Yeah. I would be so fucked up yeah. in real life. Like, wait, what? And then I would immediately just be walking in on my therapist. Like, I can't schedule no session because I need to talk to you right now. All this other shit and all these other people, y'all need to go because y'all problems are not deeper than mine right now. I would real life in real life go knocking on my therapist's door without an appointment like bitch i need to talk to you because some fucked up shit just went down mm. oh my god that okay eric what would you do because i'm this is a struggle i mean my oldest sister is old enough to be my mom i believe uh Whew. yeah she is old enough to be my mom uh that's damn that's that's deep. That's deep. I don't know. I mean, like you said, I'd be in a state of shock for a few days. Like, I, I would have to talk to somebody about this because, like, you can, you're not going to be able to think. And obviously, all these other questions are going to be going in your head. So it's like, right, it's like so a million different, million million different things, questions. And it's going to do so many different emotions and stuff. So it's like, what the fuck are you going to do? I don't know. I'm going to call my older sister today and I'm going to ask her if she's really my mama. <laughs> Because at this point, I just need to know now. I need to know. That's what I'm going to do. Mm. So to my older sister, Jennifer, are you my mama? I'm still going to call you, girl. Wow. That Listen, that shit is like already kind of fucking me up now. Like, what about the people in real life who who have actually found this out to be true? That's some crazy stuff. Like you found stuff. out that your oldest, your sister was actually your mother, or just someone in the family it turned out to be. What your, if your, your your big brother, brother was your daddy? daddy, right? Or your the uncle? You 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 been calling uncles that you been your daddy the whole time? Like my nigga, what? What if your mama is actually your grandma? What kind of <laughs> what kind of filthy shit? What what is going on? It's family secrets, boy. Clean well, out the closet, literally. Like what? I can't, y'all. Yeah, that's deep right there. It's I, real deep. I have to think about that shit. That's some empire deep shit. Man, okay. Back to this question that I couldn't answer. I still can't answer it for y'all. Which one? You're about to get married, and and your ex that you still uh, love said that they want you back. I can't answer because I real life in, in until real life. we honestly go until through I'm in that, that situation, which in I that, pray that uh, I'm never right. in that situation. Knock on wood. I don't know what the fuck I would do. Exactly. That's the best answer you can give to that. And you, we can say what we think we would do, but we don't yeah. know until we actually go do that. That one? Yeah. That one I can't answer because I don't know what I would do. I 
knowing myself, I would probably just like run away so that I <laughs> I feel like I I don't have to, I can't deal with this. <laughs> I think it's a lot of people. I don't say like there are certain people that will probably do that a lot. So I'm running away. I'm hopping on a flight to Tina Turner's house some damn well <laughs> because y'all not gonna find me out there. And I'm gonna ask Tina what would she do. And uh, rolling in the river. That what love got to do. Got to do with it. That that's the advice. She gonna be like, "Well, baby, what's love got to do with it?" And I'm gonna be like, "But Tina, <laughs> love has everything to do with it." She like, "Well, <laughs> <laughs> this is so dumb." Okay, God. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tina Turner. <laughs> Can you ever forgive me? Well, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I quit. I'm done. That's it, y'all. That's it for t- topic of the week. <laughs> Situations part two. <laughs> I can't. This is so fucking stupid. Well, <laughs> all right. Yeah. No. Still can't answer that question. That's the end of that. All right, y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed the situation. Well. Well. <laughs> um, to be quite honest. <laughs> well, when I was with Ike. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, Chile. Chile. Why do people let me be this way? <laughs> Eric, why you let me be this way? Because this is who you are. <laughs> Thank you for accepting me for me. <laughs> well, Ike told me to eat cake, <laughs> so I didn't I didn't particularly want the cake. It was banana and I don't like banana cake. I like strawberry. <laughs> What the hell did I got to do with my situation, Tina? That's that's why I didn't eat that cake, <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Miss An- Anime Book, I I just want to know who do I choose? Oh well. Uh... <laughs> <sighs> who do I choose, girl? I am stuck. Who do okay. I want to when I when I need love? When you need love, what you're going to do? (laughs) (sighs) So dumb. Okay, I quit. All right, y'all, we're moving on (laughs) to in my box. We're going to keep this thing rolling like we did last show. Um, Instead of questions in my box, we're going to do some uh, I've never cards. So... Y'all, here we go again <laughs> with this white people shit <laughs> in the <this> studio. <laughs> what is happening? Yo, y'all can listen. I know y'all be thinking we crazy, but we're not. Y'all. These white people in the studio be doing so much random shit, and it just catches us off guard. I don't know what the fuck. They in his singing opera or something. The train, them and the dog. I, d- I don't know. I don't know. All right, y'all. We finna do some I've Never Cards for In My Box. Um, I'm just going to take a sip. Every time these cards discover shit I've been doing in my life. I don't think I'm going to take anything, but I'm just pouring just in case. I mean, the last time, last episode, these cards basically read me for filth. Because I was like, how the fuck you just be knowing my life like that? Like, I do everything. I mean, Eric, you might as well pour me some. Because at this point... I think you just need to take the bottle. First off, I'm Christian. Okay? <laughs> then, <clears throat> then you really need the bottle, then. I'm a Christian woman. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go first. Uh... We did that one the last time. I didn't shuffle these right. <laughs> but this is so ignorant. Uh, <laughs> I <laughs> I've never farted while having sex. <laughs> you don't fart, you're damn chill. <laughs> well, I'm a 
drink. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> all right, Eric, go ahead. I'm just see you in a new light now, Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is dumb. <laughs> wow, it was an accident. <laughs> it was an accident. It was an accident. This was an easy one. I've never worn another person's underwear. And I have never done it. Oh, my God. That was so stupid and easy. Terrible cards. I've never had sex with someone who didn't speak the same language as me. Um, That's not true. The one time I don't ever have to drink. God is so good to me. <laughs> He's so good to me. Everybody can see. <laughs> when I got back this home. That wasn't for me. I'm not a woman. Okay. Let's see. Uh... I've, I've, I've never licked of eating food items off my partner's body. Eric, you filthy, filthy person. <sighs> drink your drink. I don't know about the. If I get out, do it though. I feel drink like I've had whipped cream or something before. Cause you, you're filthy. Filthy food goes on food. Okay? Exactly. Not on people. Exactly. Oh, uh, what if you licking whipped cream off somebody and they dirty? You lick. You're eating dirty whipped cream. Y'all nasty. I've never had sex with a married man or woman. I mean, I've never had sex with either, so. Good job, Mimi. You know, I have some morals and some values. And you know what? That's a line I'm not crossing. Boom. Kissed a married woman before then she got divorced. I don't even think I've ever kissed anyone who's married. I'm not about that life. I don't want nothing to do with sex with women that were engaged. Even though they gave the ring back at the time, so they would tell me weren't engaged. That's a different story. Okay. Okay. I've never had sex in the bathtub. Uh, I've never had sex in the bathtub. I almost had sex in a hot tub, but things didn't go well that evening. So it didn't happen. (laughs) I've never had sex with three different ethnic races. Drink. For, God damn, Eric. Let me think about it. If you got to mm. think about it, it's a drink. Fuck. You know, Puerto Rican people are basically black. So. <clears throat> <coughs> well. It's going to sip my goddamn drink. Okay. I don't like these cards. I got all the easy ones. I've never smoked pot with my mother or father. I've never done that. Would you like to trade piles, Eric? You don't want to. You don't want to put this over here. I don't. I don't like what these cards are insinuating um, <clears throat> about my life. I've never kissed a member of the same sex on the lips. Drink. <laughs> After that's a man, you would kiss Angela Bassett. Obviously, I mean, listen, because I don't got no shame in that. Exactly. Ain't, no, ain't nothing wrong with that. That's Angela Bassett. If she want to make out with me like she made out with Lady Gaga in the the show, American yeah. Horror Story. Oh, Lord. Why? We can, why? We can do that. Why, okay. Angela? Why? I'm ready for it. Why? Oof. Why did you do that? It was part of the show. I don't care. She shouldn't have done it. You want her to make out with somebody else? Any other black woman, but who? Who? Well, I mean, at this point, all black women want to make out with Angela Bassett. Of course, yeah. Okay, I get your point, Eric. Yeah, I got it. <clears throat> I've, I've, <clears throat> I've never been caught having sex in the public place. Uh, tr- I've never caught having sex in a public place. Eric, I don't like your pile. I told you, it's easy. I don't like your pile. I'm a wholesome guy, also, so I actually have morals and values and stuff. And I didn't go to college, so I didn't get a chance to live on my. <laughs> My uh, teenage wild boy fantasies and shit. I am proud to say I have never done this. I have n- never had sex in a public bathroom. That's I don't want to say it's one of the more disgusting things you can do, but it is one of the more disgusting <laughs> things you can do. I am very proud to say I've never done that because Yet. at that point, j- <laughs> damn Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. 
These are the last ones because Eric is reading me for filth over here. <laughs> Yet. Last it was, one. It was a joke. It was a joke. <laughs> this is an easy one, too. It's funny, but it's easy. One. I've never wished for a bigger dick. I have never wished for a bigger dick. <laughs> Well, no, nope, that one don't count. I did that one in the last one. That was a good one, though. I've never had sex in another country. <laughs> I have never had sex in another country. <laughs> that one is a definite yet. Wait, what? That's a definite yet at the end of Mark of that one. When you get married and you're going to travel, you're going to have sex in a different country. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, thank you so much, Eric. Like I said, that's a definite that's yet. That's not what I was thinking about. But yes, I'll go <laughs> <laughs> yes, when I get married, or when you just go on your like uh, <clears throat> nope. eat, pray, love when, trip, yep. and you, you instead of eat, pray, love, you eat. I'm gonna and, eat, you pray, eat and, and praying for dicks. Yes, Eric, you know me so well. <laughs> I'm gonna eat, pray, and do dicks. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's a script that I have to write, y'all. So, uh, <laughs> y'all be on the lookout for my new film, Eat, Pray, and Doing Dicks. <clears throat> is this going to be porn or is it just going to be straight? That's no, whatever. this is a romantic comedy. <laughs> it's going to be called I Ate, I Prayed, and I Did Dicks. <laughs> I don't know why people put up with me at this point. I don't know who will approve of that title. <laughs> me. I'm going to approve of it. I'm talking about your partner, like your backing partner. They're going to have to because it was me who did the dicks. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's my it for it. <laughs> word. <laughs> that's it for In My Box. Uh, we're moving on to shout out some oh motherfucking goodness. week. Good Lord, make me. Whole again, Jesus. Um, Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. Oh, God. Uh, shout out to my bestie. Shout out to Dominique. Uh, she just turned 30. Her birthday was uh, the day before the other day that, that and then that day that happened. Um, so shout out to her. She had a birthday party, aka an auntie party at her house, and she definitely drove the boat a few times. I just recently learned what driving the boat means. I mean, okay, internet. Driving a boat, you're pouring alcohol down. Somebody's throat straight from the bottom. I did that shit when I was in college. This is not new. Um, but we had a good time. I drank way too much. She drank way too much. She did, you know, what she did. Um, shout out to all the people who had edibles. I brought edibles to the party. Not for me, because I don't do drugs. But everybody else does drugs. Um, but we had a really great time. So shout out to you. Happy birthday. <coughs> um, you're 30, you're dirty, and you're old. Whoa. As we are. Wow. Um, shout out to Taylor LaRue Media, my uh partner media group who has been like a blessing to me. This is uh the media group that I partnered with that I worked on with my short film. So just in partnering with them, we have a lot of different projects going on for the rest of this year. We're working on four different projects right now. So um, we got a lot of stuff going on. We got a lot of films that's going to come out. So I'll keep y'all updated as each project is finished and fulfilled and ready to be shown to the world. I'll keep y'all updated on that. But just shout out to the team, Kelvin, D. Smith, and uh, Zeke. Um, yeah, shout out to all of y'all. You got some shout outs? Uh, this will be, I guess, a somber one. Just shout out to everybody that's checked up on me. Make sure I'm good. Uh, my mom recently passed away, so that was a it was a surprise for everybody, obviously, because it wasn't it wasn't necessarily expected right away. She had Alzheimer's, so it was she had a short time span, but it was expected in some form. But shout out to everybody that reached out to me, make sure I'm good, make sure the family good, and uh, everybody's okay. It's just taking it one day at a time, one step at a time. Uh, I really haven't been doing a lot, honestly, just really just 
uh, processing everything and trying to get back to living my life the way I was before and just trying to under- put every- put a, like an understanding for everything and just understanding it. And I've done that. I'm really at peace with her not being here. She's no longer suffering. She's no longer in that confusion state. So I'm really happy for that. I'm just sad. I'm not ne- never going to physically get to see her and talk to her anymore. But I'm really at peace knowing that she's in a better place. And that one, one day I'm going to see her and talk to her again. And she's always with me in my heart. Uh, but I'm just persevering, taking things one day at a time. Uh, but yeah, shout out to everybody. It's too many people to name. I was just checking in, sending their condolences, and just uh, making sure I'm good, making sure the family's good. Shout out to my family for uh, making sure we all good. Uh, my dad took it the hardest out of everybody because they were together almost like 45 years. So mm-hmm. a part of him is definitely gone. So he's he's getting better day by day also. So. Again, it's just a process. We're just taking it day by day. And her memories, we, she lives over our memories that we have of her and just the fun times we had together. So that's all we. That's all I got, really. So, and uh, week by week, I'm going to get back to doing what I've been trying to do and progress with. So right now, I'm just really low-key, just getting uh, stuff figured out and really planning ahead for my future and stuff like that, but also just processing uh, this surprise loss. But... Just also remembering the good times I had with her before the all the time was kicked in. All right. Uh, shout out to you, Eric. Uh, I've been praying for you and your family. Appreciate and, that. And um, we'll talk off off the <laughs> podcast. Um, but everybody, you know, give a shout out, out to Eric and keep him uh, blessed up. Um, yeah, we're going to move on to therapy. free. <coughs> This week's uh, advice that I have came from me being at work again, talking to one of my clients, and um, just had this moment where I was like, that's a good piece of advice for the for therapy. Um, I really just want people, especially those people who are super giving, who, who are always giving up their time and their effort and their energy, um, so much that they rarely think about themselves and they kind of forget to take care of themselves. So this week's uh, piece of advice is simply learn how to say no. That's that's literally it. It's okay to want to help someone, but when you're doing it at the cost of your own help, health or your sanity, or you just know that you're you're tired, you are burned out, it's okay to say no. It's okay to tell people, I don't have it, I cannot do that, or I don't have the time, or I don't feel like it. It's perfectly okay. So everybody, just learn how to say no. That don't mean you have to say no and then start being an asshole with it, but just learn how to say no so that you are aware that you're taking care of yourself and choosing you first, okay? Learn how to say no. I say no all the goddamn time. That's why I'm stress-free. Okay, so to any motherfucker asking me for money, anybody in my family knows. When I tell you, they don't call me to ask me for money unless someone is dying or they're on their last one penny. Otherwise, they don't call me because they know the answer is going to be no. And I love that about myself. And I love that my family knows to not ask me for shit because they know the answer is going to be no. Because I stood my ground. Took a long time, but I stood my ground. Um, y'all, that's it. That's the end of the show. Thanks for listening. Y'all go make sure y'all uh, subscribe to the podcast on all the platforms, streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, um, iHeartRadio, CastBox, Spreaker, Stitcher, Player FM, Google Play Podcast, everywhere um, that you can hear the uh, goddamn thing, except for SoundCloud. <laughs> My bad, y'all. We not on SoundCloud no more. Shit costs too much. Um, <clears throat> go and subscribe to the podcast. <laughs> That's Vibes with a Z, V-I-B-E-Z. Tell your friends to tell their grandmas and uh, to tell their, their school teachers back from 1922 to listen to the podcast <laughs> because they, too, still have ears and they, too, can listen. It's friendly for everybody. All right, y'all, make sure y'all follow us. Back in 1922? Listen, and some people still from 22 still living today, you know? Do your best. Y'all, y'all 98, about to be 98 years old. You can still listen. How grandma, great, great, great grandma got her third groove back. Because she just got her hip replaced. So, you know, this podcast is for you too. Uh, make sure y'all follow us on social media. 
Facebook and Twitter. That's Vibes Podcast, Vibes with a Z. Uh, follow us on Instagram at A-S-K-V-I-B-Z. Shoot us an email, you know, with all the shit that you want to talk about. Some shit, some shit. Yo, if y'all got some TV <laughs> recommendations or new music that y'all want us to listen to or some topics, y'all want us to do situations again, <clears throat> anything, y'all just shoot us an email. Don't shoot us no dick pics or coochie pics. Uh, shoot us an email at askvibe.com. You can't be DM me those coochie pics. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All okay. right, sing y'all. Okay. Sing your coochie don't do, pics. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't, uh-uh. Nah, nah. Nah, I'm kidding. All right, I'm yeah. Kidding. If y'all want to follow me on social media, you can follow me on uh, IG uh, and... And uh, Twitter. Twitter, I think it's the same thing. Y'all can follow me at <laughs> Mimi the actress, Mimi with two e's, M E M E T H E A C T R E S S, Mimi the actress, and uh, that's it. I really don't use any of the other social media platforms. I thought you was going <clears> to <throat> use your Sally Jesse Raphael voice when you did the promo. You run. can follow me on <laughs> the Instagram <laughs> at Mimi the actress. <laughs> Follow me on the Twitter at Viola Davis's Snot because uh, that's who I am. Um, y'all, that's it. All right, y'all. Make sure y'all keep listening to this shit. Y'all, I feel like I want to... I'll tell y'all next time. Let, let me get it set in stone first. Y'all, thanks for listening. Uh, we'll catch y'all next week or whenever the fuck we do this again. Um, listen to the song of the week right now. Here it is, Coco Sarai with coffee in the morning. We are the big motherfucking fuck you mean on baby <laughs> on his head. Oh God! Oh God! <clears throat> on I'm phoning him. <laughs> on little <on> buddy. <laughs> we are the most beautiful creatures in the whole world, black people. I mean, and I mean that in every every sense, uh, outside and inside. And to me, we have a culture that uh, is surpassed by, 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 by no other civilization, but we don't know anything about it. <laughs> Coffee in the morning, in the evening time, oh. Something about that pretty black, it's so defined, oh. Uh. Swear to God, I shiver when I see it shining, I do. Take me there, ooh, I wanna go with you All oh, that deep black heaven Take me there, ooh, I wanna go with you All oh, that sweet dark heaven Take me there, I swear that I love it, I do This is what compels me to compel them And I will do it by whatever means Coffee in the morning, in the evening time Take me there, ooh, I wanna go with you Oh, that sweet dark heaven Take me there, I swear that I love it, I do I do, I do, I do, I do, I do I do, I do, I do, I do, I do Why am I so insistent upon Giving out to them that blackness That black power, that black pushing them to identify with black culture. I think that's what you're asking. Deep in my it, soul. It, I have no choice over it. Them. Deep in my soul. It do. Deep in my soul. It do.